Secretary of State Mike Pompeo warning Russia to stop propping up the Maduro regime amid the ongoing political crisis in Venezuela. Now, this comes as Moscow has reportedly sent about 100 troops to Caracas. Secretary Pompeo saying the disputed president must cede power to opposition leader Juan Guaido. John Jordan is here. He's a former naval intelligence officer, also on the board of overseers at Stanford University's Hoover Institute. Really glad to have you here, sir. Happy to be here, Arthel. So for context, though, as we discuss this new development, why is Venezuela a geopolitical gym for Russia? Well, it has big uh, import for Russia because of the money that's owed Russia, the over $10 billion there's dollars that the Russians have invested there. And it's a little bit payback for them for what they perceive as American involvement in the Ukraine. But the administration here is running the real risk of falling into a Russian trap. The dynamics in Venezuela are completely against the Maduro regime and Russian interests over the long term. Nearly every country in North and South America is supportive of Guaido. There's a rigorous and broadly enforced sanctions regime in place. Millions of people are starving. The regime is deeply unpopular. The only way the Russians can serve up, protect their interests and Maduro can survive is if somehow this dynamic changes. And how they would do that is by inserting some Russian troops and bait the U.S. administration into some sort of military intervention. Because then the dynamics change, not just in Venezuela, mm -hmm. but throughout the region. Right. Then it becomes about Yankee imperialism and Yankee, uh, uh, Yankee invasion. Mm -hmm. So, but, but even still, how, how much weight, uh, John, does such a warning carry coming from Secretary of, the Secretary of State instead of the President of the United States, especially considering what seems to be a cordial relationship between President Putin and President Trump? Not really. It depends on how Russians read the tea leaves in the administration. The real tell here, and this would have a lot more weight, if in fact the U.S. were moving troops or doing, uh, taking overt steps um, to prepare for some sort of military intervention, which nobody in South America wants. Mm -hmm. But still, Russia has a history, John, of ignoring warnings in its quest for territorial gain. So why would they heed a warning now? Well, what they should do, the, the correct, the, Kenny Rogers was a wise man, you know, know when to hold them, know when to fold them, um, the gambler. And what the United States should do here is just wait them out, just kind of ignore the Russians. It's 100 troops only. It's just so that they can uh, protect Maduro against an unreli increasingly unreliable unreli Venezuelan military. Just wait them out. Eventually, the, the Maduro regime has to fall. So I just wouldn't fall for the trap here. Why is it a trap? Well, because the only way the Russians, the, the Maduro regime can survive is if they change the dynamic. Uh, currently, you know, there's a, uh, currently the uh, Maduro regime is wide, hugely unpopular. All but a couple of countries in Central and South America are opposed to the Maduro regime. Eventually, it has to give way. Now, if we go and intervene, um, then that changes, moves public opinion, not just inside Venezuela, but throughout Central and South America. And that, and that would give the Russians and Maduro a fighting chance. Mm -hmm. So with that said, does there need to be a lot of bite behind what Secretary Pompeo said, meaning did he really have to, which he didn't? He, 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 do you agree that he doesn't have to spell out the consequences at this point? Do you agree with the Secretary of State? I don't think they should have... I don't think they should have said anything like that. I, I think that any bellicose remarks from the administration with regard to 100 troops in Venezuela only serves Russian interests and raises the stakes and make it more and more difficult down the road for the United States just to stand pat, which would be the smart move. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, you've got uh, Maduro there fighting till the end to hold on to power. Um, and now Russia saying, guess what, buddy, we're here for you. So do you think that he will, Maduro, finally give up the ghost or is he going to just keep hanging on especially now that russia has em emboldened him with the, the troop support well that's a great question the russians sent 100 troops most probably special forces types and they're there for two reasons first of all to ensure the physical safety of maduro and to buck him up a little bit but secondly and more deviously it is to prevent maduro from cutting some sort of side deal where he could move on with his associates and family members onto uh you know comfortable exile so the russians are also establishing physical control over maduro too and that's the that's the that's the darker side of the 100 troop uh, deposit by the russians but what do they gain by getting what is or are they going to accept him to his country to their country to, to Russia except Maduro to Russia 
The Russians aren't willing to, willing to accept defeat here yet. The Russians can be very stubborn when they get involved in these sorts of things. Look at Afghanistan in the 70s and 80s. What the Russians are trying to do, their game, their only options are to bait the United States into doing something which will change the political and public PR dynamics inside of Central and South America and win support for Maduro by making him the champion of Venezuelan nationalism and a defender against Yankee imperialism. Copy that. All right, John, good analysis. We'll see you next time.